Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about heuristic evaluations and we're going to go more in depth about how to complete them and other important information you should know. So there are pretty much five steps that you should follow when conducting a heuristic evaluation. And we're going to talk about them more in depth here in a minute, but the five steps are to prepare, ask important questions, review the product, get another perspective, and prepare feedback. So to prepare for a heuristic evaluation, you really need to do three things. First, you need to identify the business goals of the product. So what does the business want the product to achieve? Then you need to identify the heuristics you will use to evaluate the product. In this case, um, we're going to be using a set of 10 heuristics. And third, you need to create guidelines, checklists, or design patterns for the product. The second step for conducting a heuristic evaluation um, is asking some questions. So here I have a list of great questions to ask to um, really get the information you need for conducting the heuristic evaluation. So first, you want to ask, what do you want us to review? Now, this is really important when you're um, reviewing a website for a company, especially if you end up working at a place where you just go and do uh, usability tests for different companies, because you may not know everything about the company. And you also want to be able to know, you know, they may not want you to uh, be reviewing their main company site. They may be wanting you to review an application that only their employees use. So that's a very important question to ask. And then you'll want to ask who uses the site. So is it the customers? Is it employees? Stuff like that. And then you're going to ask what are the business goals of the site? And then you'll ask what are the most important user goals that the site should support? What are users going to be coming to the site to accomplish? And which of those things is the site going to support. Then you'll ask how will people use the site and what are the most popular pages in the site. So if the home page is the main page and the most important, then you'll want to be able to look at that page. If the contact page is most important because people are contacting the company very frequently, for different reasons, then you'll want to review that page. So you want to know which pages are the most popular. Then you're going to ask what design process did you follow? So how did you go about designing the site? And then the last question is you're going to ask, is there anything else you think we should know? Just in case there's anything else that these questions didn't cover. For the third step, you'll actually be reviewing the product using the heuristics that, you're, uh, that you've chosen. And you'll want to use the website to get a feel for its functionality and to understand how it is designed. So you'll just want to look around, kind of use things, um, and get a feeling for, you know, how well does it function overall. Then you're going to work through each task and no usability issues. So you'll sign up for a website for the website or you'll complete the contact form or you'll go find something and add it to the cart and purchase it or something like that. So you'll be going through each task and then you'll write down the usability issues, things that are going wrong, things that aren't working right. And then you'll explore pages that are not as noticeable and then you'll note the usability issues there. Pages that people don't um, use as frequently or that not many people visit tend to have some other usability issues that might not be caught because people don't use them as often. So it's important to look at these pages as well. Step four is getting another perspective. This can be important because um, just as you yourself looking at a page, you may miss things just because you have a better uh, understanding of the site or for whatever reason. And so having other people look at the site as well can help you to identify issues that you may not have 
been able to catch. So you'll brief about three people on the goals of the product and then the users and the key tasks. And then you'll ask each person to complete all tasks and scenarios without leading. So you're not gonna um, lead it like an actual usability test. You're just gonna let them work through and then you'll get their feedback on what they think is um, an issue and move on from there. The last step is preparing the feedback. So you're going to be collating the usability issues and removing the duplicates. So you may have issues that appear frequently or they're very similar. And so you don't wanna write that down three times if there's something that's happening frequently. You just need to write it down once. So for each issue, you're going to explain the problem assign a severity rating and provide a solution. Now it's really important to provide a solution because companies are looking for solutions. They don't wanna just hear what is wrong with their site and they wanna hear how they can fix it. <laughs> so the 10 heuristics that you're going to probably be using are the 10 heuristics by Jacob Nielsen. And we're not gonna talk about them in depth because they're covered pretty thoroughly in the textbook but we'll just I'll just read them off for you. So the 10 heuristics are visibility of system status, match between system and the real world, user control and freedom, consistency and standards, help users recognize, diagnose, and recover from errors, error prevention, recognition rather than recall, flexibility and efficiency of use, aesthetic and minimalist design, and help and documentation. Something to remember when conducting a heuristic evaluation, especially in a prof professional environment, is that you will likely need multiple evaluators. And there are two reasons for this. First, it will likely take multiple people to spot most of the issues. Just one person alone is, it is unlikely for you to be able to spot them all on your own. And then second, more problems are found when using checklists. So having multiple evaluators and giving them a checklist of things to look for or a checklist of things to do will help you catch more errors as well. Next, we're gonna talk about Norman's theory of action. Now, Norman's theory of action is really just a set of goals um, that should, are specified for um, when you are completing a cognitive walkthrough. And we're gonna talk about those things right now. So the goals for the cognitive walkthrough are five different things. First, we want the intention to act so the goal is achieved, the sequence of actions that are planned, execution of the action sequence, perception of the state of the world, and interpreting the perception with regard to our expectations. So a cognitive walkthrough is a formal way of predicting a person's thoughts and actions as they use an interface for the first time. So to do this, a list of actions needed to complete a task is necessary before completing a cognitive walkthrough. Uh, you want to attempt to tell a realistic story about the actions a user will take to perform a task, and the story needs to be believable and motivate each action. So there are three different steps for conducting a cognitive walkthrough. First, the preparation second, reviewing the product, and third, preparing feedback. So for the preparation step, you wanna do three different things. You wanna write a profile of the users. So you wanna write down who the users are likely to be, what it is they likely are there to do, and who they are, and just some information that will help you understand them a little better. Then you wanna define a key task and then you wanna list an appropriate sequence of actions needed to complete the task. So you will likely have several tasks, multiple tasks, and you'll wanna write a list of actions needed to complete the task for each one. So the second step is to review the product. And we wanna ask four questions when doing this. First, we wanna ask, will the customer realistically be trying to do this action? And is the control for the action visible? 
is there a strong link between the control and the action? And is feedback appropriate? And we're going to go in more in depth for these questions. So for question one, will the user realistically be trying to do this action? We're going to break this down into four sub questions that will help us answer this question. First, you're going to ask, will the user expect to have to carry out this action at this point? Is it obvious that the action can be carried out at this point? Will users have the knowledge or experience needed to do this action? And will users expect to do a different action at this step because of their experience with other systems? Question two is, is the control for the action visible? And this is also broken up into four sub questions. So you wanna ask, is the control hidden? Is the control buried too deep within the menu or navigation system? Is the control for the action non-standard or unintuitive? Does the control for the action have a label? And so um, based on your answers for this question, these questions, uh, you'll be able to identify whether there's a usability issue. And the same for question one. If you, uh, and get, if you have answers to those questions that, you know, the user shouldn't be trying to do this action at this point, or they won't know that this is what's coming, then there's probably a usability issue. So for question three, is there a strong link between the control and the action? The four sub questions that we wanna to ask to determine this is, is the label on the control confusing? Are there other controls visible at this point that look like a better choice? Is there a timeout at this step that does not allow the user enough time to take the action? And is the action physically difficult to execute? So if you answer yes to any of these questions, again, there could be a usability issue that you need to identify and write down so that when you're planning your usability test later on, you can test this. And question four, the final question, is feedback appropriate? Now this one has a few more questions that you're gonna wanna ask to determine it, but um, they are, if there is no feedback, might users try to carry out the step again or give up on the task? Is the feedback easy to miss? Is the feedback too brief, poorly worded, or ambiguous? Does the system's response imply that the task has been completed when it hasn't? Does the system fail to prompt users to take the next step or might the prompt lead them to take the wrong step? So again, just like all the other questions, you if you answer yes to any of these sub questions, there may be a usability issue that you need to target in your test. After you've gone through this process of asking these questions and determining whether there are any usability issues, for each problem, you need to do three things. Explain the problem, assign a severity rating, and provide a solution. And providing a solution is arguably the most important part because businesses don't want to hear the problems. They want to hear the solution to the problems. So if you offer um, advice on what the problems are without providing a solution or multiple solutions for each problem, the company is not probably going to be very happy. They're going to want that. And then after that, you'll, you'll write a report or present the results of your heuristic evaluation. Next, we're gonna talk about the three factors that you should consider when defining severity. So the first thing is, does the problem occur on a red route? So a red route is a really important route. It's one that a lot of users take. It's a very common route. So um, this just means, does the problem occur on a fre frequent or important tasks? This means that it's a more severe problem and it affects more users than other issues might. Second, you'll want to determine, will the problem be difficult for users to overcome? This, is, this just means, is the problem hard to solve? And if the answer is yes, this is also a more severe problem and it has a large impact on completion rate of the task. And lastly, you'll want to know, will users be bothered by the problem repeatedly? 
So this is just talking about persistent problems, things that crop up a lot. This is also going to mean that the issue is more severe. It impacts completion time and impacts customer satisfaction. Now we're going to talk about criteria for severity, and there are four different levels of severity we can use to describe each of our issues that we find. First is the critical issues. Now these are the most important issues to address. This is um, a problem that makes some customers unwilling or unable to complete a very common task on the website. And uh, for these issues, you want to fix them urgently. So as just immediately. <laughs> Second below critical is serious issues. Um, these issues significantly slow down some users when completing a common task. Some customers may find a workaround for completing this task. These are issues that need to be fixed ASAP, as soon as possible, but not before the critical issues. <laughs> the third severity rating you can use is medium, and these issues make some customers feel frustrated. They don't affect task completion, and they're just things that can be fixed uh, during the next already scheduled update. And the last severity rating is low. This is the least problematic things on the website. So they're just quality problems and they're not super urgent. So these are things like um, design, how things look, things like that. But the problem is if you have too many lows on a website, it reduces the perception of trust. So if there are a lot of these things wrong, then it's more important to fix them quickly. So now that you've given a severity rating for each usability issue, there are a few things that you wanna do for each issue. You wanna number it, and then you want to list the location or locations of the issue. You want to describe the issue, uh, give a recommendation for how the issue could be fixed, write the severity rating down, and then take a screenshot of where the issue is. How to give results of your heuristic evaluation. So when giving results of your heuristic evaluation, you want to do a few things to ensure that things aren't taken the wrong way and to make sure that you are giving the best advice you can. So first you want to ask what the client thinks needs to be changed. Now this will help you to understand whether they already have seen some of the issues and also help you to um, determine which issues to uh, really put an emphasis on. Because if a client sees something wrong, then that's probably an issue that they want to fix. And it's more important to give, um, you know, that recommendation for how to fix it, as well as presenting the other issues you see. Then you're going to want to highlight the strengths of design of the design. Nobody wants to just hear the bad things. So make sure that you tell them what's great about it. Avoid personal opinion. You don't want to talk about what you personally think. You want to just focus on the things that are just functionally not working very well. You want to prepare well, solicit opinions from other people, be nice about it, avoid personal opinions, like we have already said, um, get teams arguing over the data. So uh, present the people that you are conducting the heuristic evaluation for with the data and get them talking about it. Then you'll want to be specific and then show how to fix the problems that you're seeing, provide actions that can be taken immediately, and then provide a strategic insight. And last but not least, know your audience. Know how, know how you need to present the results. If people are gonna be too busy to come to a meeting to listen to you talk about it, write a good report. And also make sure you include um, a great summary so that people who are even busier than that don't have to read through the entire thing to get the highlights. So to 
just summarize what a usability issue is. A usability issue is anything that does any of these things on the right. So it prevents task completion, slows down the user, takes the user off course, causes the user to find a workaround, makes the user confused, irritates or annoys the user, forces an error, prevents the user from noticing something, implies things are okay when they're not, implies a task is complete when it isn't, causes the user to misinterpret content or prevents the user from taking the next step. So if you see any of these things while you're conducting a heuristic evaluation, then you should probably be writing them down as issues and um, giving them severity ratings and figuring out what a good solution would be. And then of course, after this, you'll be conducting a usability test based on what you find in your heuristic evaluation. So it'll give you even more insight to add to how things could be fixed. So I hope that this video was helpful to you and you got a little bit more in-depth understanding about how a heuristic evaluation works, um, especially in a professional environment. Um, that's all I have for you. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And thanks for watching.